award-winning Cinema Classics is produced by John DeSando and Johnny DiLoretto. Listen to the shows and read reviews online at wcbe.org. I'm, I'm John DeSando. Sorry. That's okay. Go ahead. I'm John DeSando. And I'm Johnny DiLoretto. This is Cinema Classics. You know it is. This is going to be a tough one, John. All right, listen. Today, when we're recording, mm -hmm. Kevin Spacey has acknowledged that he's gay. Mm -hmm. What do you know? Big surprise. Yeah, right. right. To kind of offset the allegations by a, a, a man that he, when he was 14, when this man was 14, Spacey had hit on him. Yeah. Right? So House of Cards is now going to be history after year. They said they had made that decision a while ago. Right. But what I'm saying is that, that this sexual harassment business has begun to have big ramifications yeah. from a big guy. Now let me ask you, because yeah. this is really fascinating how this is cascading. Yes. You know, 60 women at this point have come out against Harvey Weinstein and what's Hold that, on. I'm not recording? Yeah, right, I'm sorry. That's okay. Let's do it again. Yes. Shit. That's right, I'm glad you caught it. <laughs> The award-winning Cinema Classics is produced by John DeSando and Johnny DiLoretto. Listen to the shows and read reviews online at wcbe.org. I'm John DeSando. I'm Johnny DiLoretto. This is Cinema Classics. Yeah, boy, and talk and about hot topics. You know, we're tackling a really heavy topic today. This, we don't usually do this. No, we but, do not. <laughs> uh, let's talk Harvey Weinstein yeah. and the this you know watershed moment for yeah. not only Hollywood, but for America, it seems. Sure, it is. No. He's a big guy, six feet, 300 pounds. Disgusting. Uh, homely as hell. Right, it's like one eye, <laughs> one, one of his eyes is kind of shut. Oh, so. Just by sheer, like, wow, <laughs> like so, grimacing. So you can make the cheap conclusion that there's no other way he can get it than by using his power. Yeah, well, <laughs> that is true. That, but, you know, it's disturbed. <laughs> Excuse me. It's disturbing, the allegations, as we said, about 60 women so far have come forward. Yeah. This is now opening a Pandora's box of allegations. Uh, most recently, Anthony Rapp, um, Broadway actor, I think he's in Rent and a couple of other yes, things, Firefly, correct. Correct. Um, accused Kevin Spacey of uh, coming on to him, or the, the exact quote was, trying to get sexual with me or something like that. Uh, back in the early 80s. When he was 14. When he was 14 and Kevin Spacey was 26. Um, so now, you know, what are the ramifications of this? I guess the, the reason I wanted to bring this topic up to you, or discuss it with you, was to ask the question, when these artists, like Woody Allen, Roman Polanski, now Kevin Spacey, um, and I'm not including Harvey Weinstein in that because he's not an artist, but when those people are involved in these troublesome bits of moral business, can we still enjoy the work? Can we still derive uh -oh. meaningful power from them? <laughs> is a, this is a, a, a classic, cinema classic question that you and I have rolled around so many times yeah. over these years. And, and I'm not sure we've it's been definitive. I do have a feeling about it. Okay. I believe the art is separate from the artist. I believe we need to do that, although in these days, with so much communication, particularly on social uh, media, it's very difficult to separate the two. Mm -hmm. And uh, you we're just human beings. And when we look at somebody, James Tobrick, for instance, the director. Toback, James Toback. I'm, I'm yeah. sorry, yeah. When you look at James Toback, the director, and how many scores of allegations against him, you're kind of wondering, well, what films did he direct? And what is my attitude toward? But, yeah. you know, I, I, I would like to, uh, Kevin Spacey, just recent, you know, what you yeah. were talking about just recently, I, I don't know if it does or not. I, that's a great question. How do you feel? Well, I, I, I'm troubled by it. And, you know, like intellectually, I can make that distinction. Intellectually, I can say, look, Woody Allen had this allegation of child molestation against him. I can kind of reason my way out. He wasn't found guilty of it. It's gone, put away. It was that one accusation. It, there's doubt surrounding it. You know, some people say there is, some people say there isn't. I don't know. Is enough doubt surrounding it to make it okay? And 
you know, I can, like I said, intellectualize my way out of it. Now, the emotional part of me, you know, I loved Woody Allen. Yeah. I had, he was like a, sort of a figure, like a moral figure for me. And so there's that part of me that's just totally crushed and disheartened by it. Well, you've cooled on him over the years, but that's because his output hasn't met your expectations. The suck. Yeah, right. Yeah. So you haven't, I don't think you've made that one-to-one -one correlation right. between his personal life and that, but it still bothers. Now, interesting about Harvey Weinstein, I, I don't care what the guy produced. He's a producer. He didn't, he didn't, you know, create these films. So, like, I can go back and watch Pulp Fiction or Shakespeare in Love and not care. Gangs of New York. Gangs of New York. Yeah. Not care because Harvey Weinstein put the money up for it. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. However, then now comes this other question that's been haunting the rest of the Hollywood community, which is who knew what? When did they know it? Mm -hmm. How much did they know? And why didn't they do anything, right? Mm -hmm. So now, it does kind of cast a taint upon the works of Tarantino and Ben Affleck and Matt sure. Damon. What did these people, Brad Pitt, you know, there was that thing that uh, Gwyneth Paltrow said that Brad Pitt told her to shut up about. Mm -hmm. uh, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And they were married. Mm -hmm. Well, when it gets down to George H.W. Bush, Patton Butts. Yeah. <laughs> we got because his favorite book is David Copperfield. That's, <laughs> that's what he tells them. That's no, the joke. That's right. Yeah. I thought it was one of your bad jokes. No, no, no. Your, it's it's right. not my bad joke. It's the former president of the United States' bad joke. Look, at Harvey's a great example about the ambivalence of all of this. Um, 20 of his films have been nominated for the Oscar, and I think four or five have won the Oscar. This is major. So that, and, and I, you and I know enough about the entertainment business, and I certainly know about it from my son and daughter, who were daughters, two of them, who are involved there and have had experiences like this. Yeah. That it is a serious matter because of the power that rests with somebody like Harvey, producer, not artist, producer, to make your career. Gwyneth Paltrow probably would still be the daughter of somebody if she hadn't, in, in a sense, been, mm -hmm. been working with him. So, you know, so to, to say to you how, how difficult it is, is to underestimate the enormous weight on a young, a beautiful young woman who is approached by this man of power who can make her career. Yeah, and not only make her career, make the career that most everybody dreams of yeah, yes. is movie stardom yeah. living in Hollywood working you know yeah. working by actually not working yep. because that's what Hollywood is you're just pretending and you're making millions of dollars <laughs> traveling all over the world hanging out with beautiful people and pretending yeah. it is the dream it is the you know the American dream to be a movie star <laughs> yeah. and so yeah I can imagine how powerful and disturbing a sort of bargain that is well and and it, and it radiates, as you were suggesting, it radiates out to people like Ben Affleck uh, because they're, uh, because if he knows that Harvey is, is doing inappropriate things, you would think that he would confront him. You know, and, and for everybody else, any other male in Hollywood who knew that this was happening, it's, it's a sin that's shared. Yeah. So what do you do about it? You... Yeah, how do you, See, as that's a male, I mean, that's I'm, what, the women, I understand. Well, that's what I mean. I think we're in, a, this is the pivotal moment. This is the moment when, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, you hear a story like that, and you might go, ugh, disgusting. What the, what the hell is the guy thinking? You know, and then you kind of shrug it off and keep moving. Now, today is a different time. These things, we know the power to damage psyche that they have, psyches that they have, uh, careers and, you know, psychological well-being, yeah, people's spirituality, like it resonates through every fiber, right? Yeah. We know that now. And so, you know, you could imagine, you, you can imagine yourself in a position like 20 years ago, you hear something like that, you'd be repulsed, but you might not do anything about it. Now, you know it's our moral, right. ethical duty to respond. And I think that's the way... The and it's not, is that an excuse that, you know, it's like kind of, it's like watching Gone with the Wind and, you know, the depiction of uh, black people in it. You know, back then it was like, oh, was whatever. It was not, no one even thought about it. Today you realize that, ugh, oh, that's like, you know, we were 
we were morally remiss. Well, our, our advance in all of this is that and now, of course, women are, are freed to, uh, to speak up about it. But um, just as importantly, men now recognize that there is a responsibility on their part to come forward, to protect, in a sense, I don't know if the protect is too paternalistic, but to counter uh, the, the power that is uh, impinging upon these women and to serve as a sounding board for justice, yeah. for fairness, uh, for uh, against sexism, I see this as a really good thing. It's still, as you depict it, it's still a very tough thing to do when you are talking purely about power. Not even money, we're talking power. And to be a man with another man who is your superior and to call him on it. Yeah. I suspect there's a way, there's a way of counseling by saying, hey bud, you know, there's rumors about, and you know, I, you know, and I love you and all this, but you, you got to stop it because this is not morally the right thing to do. And yeah. it's, <laughs> but here's an example that just that is like the uh, the absurd top of all of this: thirty-two million dollars to oh, a woman, yeah, for uh, by Fox for Bill O'Reilly. Right. I, I, I'm speechless. How could it be worth $32 million to shut her up anyway? Mm -hmm. But then, to be complicit like that? What, you, you know, where's your, where's your compass? Right. <laughs> there is no compass. Oh, my God. The, the needle has flown off the compass. Oh, my point. Lord. So, what do you think? What do you think? Is, 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 is there an answer to this? Or do you think it's incremental? We're now at this stage. We'll be at another stage. Well, I don't know. We're in a hyper... We're a hyper aware stage at this point where, um, you know, there was that incident the other day on the internet where Adam Sandler was on a, a British yeah, pop show yes. and he kept putting his hand on this uh, woman's knee and she was moving it off and the, you know, the Twitterverse erupted in, look at this guy, yeah. how disgusting, he doesn't know what he's doing, she's so repulsed. Now she subsequently released a statement saying it didn't bother her, whatever. But that's what I mean. The eyes are on everybody right now. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and retroactively, by the way, you know, all these accusations coming out, like in Kevin Spacey's case, 30 years later, you know, it's, um, I don't know. There's no statute of limitations on assault, I guess. And it's not just... I mean, <laughs> legally there is, but yeah. it's not morally, just, no. It's not just entertainers. Uh, Mark Halpern, which was apparently a political analyst, yeah. has been sacked. Yeah. Over this. Now, let me ask you, what do you think about this, that mere accusations can derail your career? I, mere accusations. Yeah. I believe that it's in the numbers that the decision mm, can be made. I see. Uh, one or two, you've got to approach this very carefully. Um, because we haven't even mentioned on the side of women who play this game, who, who play the power game by the use of their sexuality, yeah. uh, who, who will be complicit. But let us just say a male who is accused one or two times, that has to be very carefully done. But when you get 10, 20, 30, discount 20 of the 30, mm -hmm. and you have a serious case. Yeah. And, you know, let's also just look, uh, cast the net a little wider here. Um, I've read many stories, news stories, in the past six months of female teachers who are sexually abusing their male students. Yeah, right, or, right. Uh, and sometimes female. And I know that that happens um, male to female students and male to male likewise. But it's, you know, obviously not as widespread uh, an abuse as any sort of male, um, you know, actions. But... It just goes to show you that power itself, wherever you'll find it, you'll find these repulsive behaviors. You will. And you know something? You know how powerful this subject is? We didn't talk about movies once. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I didn't laugh once. Huh. <laughs>